morning. We will get seated. We'll have our worship service this morning. Welcome to First Baptist Church, Chapel Hill. Yes. Yeah, they heard me. Okay. <laughs> That's because you were talking, man. <laughs> Just a few announcements real quickly here before we start. The Christmas Eve service, 6 p.m., candlelight service. Uh, I don't think we will have, uh, uh, I think we want to bring our children as well. Am I right? Yeah, the whole family, because it's not going to be that long, but we're going to enjoy it, enjoy it together. So from six at 6 p.m. on Christmas Eve, <clears throat> worship service only on that Sunday morning, Christmas Day at 11 o'clock. I uh, want to remind you of the Pancake Supper. Uh, that we're going to be putting on on December 21st. That'd be the Wednesday before Christmas, starting at 5.30 till about 6.15, and then we'll sing some carols to follow. So that'll be that Wednesday evening service. I uh, just want to remind you, if you have uh, Secret Sister, there are some Secret Santa gifts still left on the table in the vestibule or in the hallway right outside the back doors. Be sure and check that if you have uh, signed up for Secret Santa and didn't get some. Uh, New Year's Eve, we'll have game night from 7 to 10, I believe, right, Ray? I think it's 7 to 10 on New Year's Eve. So uh, that's the things that are coming up at this point. Look at your bulletin for anything else. And now we will begin our service. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this time that we have to worship you. We thank you for this season. Thank you for loving us, and thank you for your presence now. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, yes, if you're visiting with us, please sign a visitor's card. They are located on the pew in front of you and drop it in the box on your way out. Please, we'd like to contact you. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Oh, we're going to have a video. Excuse me. I was getting ready to sing. I could sing, but that'd be okay. <laughs> Let's watch this video. You know, to us, evangelism and discipleship isn't just like one hour a week meeting with them and doing a Bible story or going through a scripture. To us, it's, it's spending life with them. It's living with them, being there with them. And then sharing scripture with them. Keep sharing the truth with them. When they come to the city from the villages, they immediately are looking at in the face of the reality that they are invisible in the city. So the women are out there begging on the streets and people are walking by them constantly. They don't see them. They don't even acknowledge them. They don't talk to them. And so I think God's really opened up a door for us to come into their lives and see them. So we see their needs. We don't look at them as some invisible person or some number or some project. We look at them as made in God's image and people that deserve to hear the good news of Jesus Christ. So we started a project to help us gain access for their people, and this project helps them provide jobs, and it gives us a reason to be among them and spending time with them so that we can share the gospel with them. So there's one lady that we met through our ministry, 
and she's really a leader among the community. And we were able to start meeting with her and her family and start sharing the Bible stories with her. We would go visit her every week, and we've just been faithfully sharing with her for over three years. And finally, about two months ago, she decided she wanted to give her life to Jesus, and we were able to baptize her in the community in front of the whole community, and she's able to testify what God has done in her life. The hope would be one day to be able to see Embera missionaries be sent out to their villages to share the gospel, share the God stories with people so they can have enough information to follow Jesus. We just want to thank you all for giving to the Lottie Moon offering, because without that, we wouldn't be able to do what we do. We're able to focus on our ministry. We don't have to worry about raising support, and we're able to really just dedicate all of our time to sharing the good news with people who have never heard. That's what your Lottie Moon Christmas offering does. So just to, to be able to share the gospel in different places, different countries, inter, through the International Mission Board. Let's stand together. We sing some Christmas songs, okay? If you need a hymn book, they're down below. If you don't, the words are right up here. So let's join it. Angels, we have heard all night. Angels, we have heard on high, sweetly singing o'er the plains, and the mountains in reply echo back their joyous strains.
seated. All right. This morning, Matthew says, to me, I don't have the King James in my database. And I said, that's heresy. <laughs> that's okay. You listen to these words. I, I wanted to read to you out of the original language. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. Okay. But the, the original language for a lot of us, I told you last Sunday, the first time I ever read these words in public, I was about seven years old. In, uh, in the school play, and uh, they, uh, they still resound in my heart and my head just as they did back then, maybe even more so, because nothing in the world for our generation says it like these words, Luke chapter 2. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. This taxing was first made when Serenius was governor of Syria, and all went to be taxed, every one to his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. I love that expression. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. This shall be a sign to you. you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, 
Let us now go into Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known to us. And they came with haste, and they found Mary and Joseph, the baby, and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying, which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, as it was told, as it had been told them. Will you pray with me? Our Father, we thank you for this day, and we thank you for this Christmas time, and Lord, we thank you for this Christmas story. We thank you, Lord, that this story has been read for 2,000 years. It has been told for 2,000 years. It has been shared for 2,000 years. It has been acted out in numerous pageants and plays, and it has been rehearsed and remembered by your people for all that time. Lord, we thank you for the simplicity of this story. We thank you for the humility of this story. We thank you for the peacefulness of this story. And we pray, Lord, that in every one of our hearts, it may live just as it did that very first Christmas night. Lord, may the peace of Christmas come to live in our hearts. And may the praise of the angels come to live in our hearts. May the realization that that baby in the manger was Christ the Lord live in our hearts just as it did in Mary and Joseph and the shepherds. And Lord, we pray that at this Christmas time, you might enable us to turn loose of the things that have held us back, those things that stand in the way of us celebrating the birth of the Savior, And Lord, may we come to you with our hearts open to the glory, the magnificence of you coming to this earth. We thank you, Father, for a Savior who came to our world to take us to his. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
and his gospel is peace. Chains shall he break, for the slave is our brother, and in his name all oppression shall cease. Sweet hymns of joy, in grateful chorus raise we let all within us praise his holy name Christ is the Lord oh praise his name forever his power Thank you, Amy. Next Saturday, we're having dress rehearsal for the children's program for this next Sunday. Next Sunday morning will be our children's and a few adults program. <laughs> so, and young people. <laughs> so there'll be everybody will be involved with that on next Sunday. So if you have a part on there, be sure and be here on Saturday at 10 o'clock because we're having dress rehearsal for that. So be here for that. Let's stand together and sing some more Christmas carols. Christmas songs are different than Christmas carols. <laughs> Jingle bells is a Christmas song. <laughs> it came upon a midnight clear. Touch their heart. 
many of you know the second verse of all the Christmas carols? Or the third verse? We all know the first verse real well, don't we? <laughs> but we need to go tell it on the mountain. Okay. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain. That Jesus Christ is born. While shepherds kept their watching, poor silent flocks by night. Behold, throughout the heavens there shone a holy light. Go tell it on the mountain. Jesus Christ is born. A shepherd's feared and trembled when low above the earth rang out the angel chorus and hailed our Savior's birth. Go tell it on the mountain over the hills and Jesus Christ is born down in a lowly manger. The humble Christ was born, and God sent a salvation that blessed Christmas morn. Go tell it on the mountain over. Father, we thank you for this season. Lord, we just pray that we can keep this up all year. And so that the feeling and the and the, the Christmas season can last year around. Lord, that we can celebrate your birth. Lord, that we can celebrate your life and the crucifixion that made it possible for us to be with you. Lord, we just we thank you for that. Lord, as we hear your words preached today, Lord, open our minds and our hearts to receive your word. And we'll give you all the glory in Christ's name. Amen. I want to remind you about Lottie Boone. We saw the uh, video a while ago, and uh, it was mentioned uh, several times. I, I, uh, you, I, I don't know if you've seen recently, but Lottie Moon Christmas offering has come to be uh, abbreviated as LMCO. Yeah, and the first time I saw that, I was I was very confused because I'm thinking Lockheed Martin Company. <laughs> And finally, I asked somebody, they said, it's Lottie Moon Christmas offering, preacher, don't you know that? And I said, oh, okay, okay. But anyhow, it sometimes shows up in their publicity out of, uh, out of uh, uh, the convention and whatnot. But it's extremely important to world missions, to the world missions that Southern Baptists do, that uh, we support these folks. Every bit of it, every penny of it goes to foreign missions. So I'd encourage you by the end of the month, to please give uh, generously to supporting those missions. Preparing for mission uh, is, uh, is something that's, um, preparing for Christmas is something incredi incredibly important to all of us. And you have been working on that now for some of you for the last few weeks and some of you for the last four months. 
And we're going to read some scripture this morning out of Luke chapter 1 about preparing for Christmas. But before we do that, I want us to uh, uh, do a responsive reading, some of it out of the New Testament and some of it out of the Old. Uh, Matthew, would you bring those up, please, sir? And this time we have them on the screen because Matthew knows this translation. Forgive me, Matthew. That guy takes care of me all the time, and I shouldn't, I shouldn't be giving him a hard time, should I? These, uh, these scriptures, I'll read the first two slides, and I'd like for you to stand with me, and you read the second two, if you would. Sometimes this isn't recognized as a Christmas scripture. This is out of Galatians 4. At just the right time, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under law to redeem those under law that we might receive the full rights of son. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign and the virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son. We'll call him Emmanuel. Now let's read together. The people walking in darkness Son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. I love hearing you reading God's word. May he bless it to our hearts today. Have a seat. Some of you have had travel plans for a long time. If you were going on airliners, I'm sure you have. And uh, you purchased your ticket, ticket some while back. I hope that when you get to the airport, there's an airplane there waiting to take you to wherever you're going to go because sometimes that doesn't always work out anymore. And I hope you get to your destination safe and you come back home uh, safely when it's over. A lot of us will be on the uh, roads and highways this year. Uh, traveling on uh, 45 or 35 or I-10 or 290 or, or wherever that uh, takes us to our kids and grandkids or our moms and dads. And I hope those, uh, that those travel plans will, uh, will be uh, uh, met with uh, warm embraces and a good, a good time cele celebrating together. Most of you have decorated, okay? Some of you got your husbands to help. And uh, I hope your house looks as beautiful as, as ours does. Judy always brings out things that, uh, that delight my heart. And uh, sometimes I can be grumpy at Christmas, and uh, that, always, that always makes a difference. And I, I love the lights. I love the tree. I love our uh, nativity set, which we have had for 56 years we got that as a wedding present. My, my. And Mary and Joseph still look very young. Some of you have started cooking. I hope my oldest daughter-in-law is making divinity. That's my favorite candy in all the world. And she, uh, her life has become very busy and she doesn't make it like she used to. She used to make it for all of my staff at school. I mean, she, she really did it on the, on the top shelf. Now I'm very happy if I get a little box to bring home with me. But anyhow, some of you have been baking cakes and you've been making cookies and all those wonderful things that bring delightful smells. And we appreciate the spread this morning uh, out, uh, out in the entry. Uh, with all those wonderful cookies and the wassail and coffee and all of that, uh, all of that wonderful stuff. But you know, sometimes we don't reflect a lot on the preparation in uh, in God's Word that tells us that God too prepared for Christmas. 
he also made plans. He also brought them to pass. And that happened just as he said, just as the shepherds were told, at just the right time, as Paul writes, God's son came into this world. It wasn't a last minute thing. It wasn't a rush to Walmart to find something. It wasn't one of those things that sometimes we associate with Christmas. It was something that happened over, over many, many years before. And so I want to read to you beginning Luke chapter 1, verse 5. In the time of Herod, king of Judah, there was a priest named Zechariah who belonged to the priestly division of Abijah. His wife, Elizabeth, was also a descendant of Aaron. Both of them were righteous in the sight of God, observing all the Lord's commands and decrees blamelessly, but they were childless because Elizabeth was not able to conceive, and they were both very old. Once when Zechariah's division was on duty and he was serving as priest before God, he was chosen by lot. Yeah, they rolled the dice to see who was going to serve that. I don't think I've ever been chosen to preach by that, I, but I don't know. It could be. But uh, anyhow, it's, uh, it seems a little strange to, to find out who's gonna, going to serve. They, uh, according to the custom of the priesthood, to go into the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And when the time for the burning of incense, incense came, all the assembled worshipers were praying outside. And then an angel of the Lord appeared to him, to Zechariah, standing at the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zechariah saw him, he was startled and grew of fear. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you are to call him John. He will be a joy and a delight to you, and many will rejoice because of his birth. Zechariah was going to need to remember this when he got older, okay, and that little boy was growing up. Early on, he was a delight to his mom and dad, but in their old age, I'm sure there were a lot of sleepless nights and a lot of times in which they thought, what was the Lord thinking to send us a baby? He will be a joy and delight, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He is never to take wine or other fermented drink. This is uh, kind of a reflection of the Nazarite uh, vows that were sometimes taken in the Old Testament. He was to be a special uh, prophet for God. And he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before he is born. He'll bring back many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God, and he will go before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous to make, make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Um, I'm going to, to skip a little bit. And I hope you won't think badly about that. Some Somebody sometime back kind of was concerned that I skip the scripture occasionally, and I do. That's with the understanding that you read the scripture for yourself, and you can go back and fill in those gaps that I leave out. But we've got a lot of territory to cover this morning. So just you go back and read the whole story. It's a wonderful story. But anyhow, uh, Zechariah asked for a sign. And the angel said, I'm Gabriel, and I've been sent to speak to you. And uh, in verse 23, we pick up um, at the, at, when his time of service was completed, he returned home. But he returned home silent because of um, Zachariah's unbelief, if you will. Uh, and because he had asked for a sign, the sign was that he would not be able to speak until the baby was born. Um, maybe Elizabeth didn't mind that. When the time of his service was completed, he returned home. And after this, his wife Elizabeth became pregnant and for five months re remained in seclusion. The Lord has done this for me, she said. In these days, he has shown his favor and taken away my disgrace among the people. Now, in the sixth month of Elizabeth's, Elizabeth's pregnancy, 
God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled and had his words, had his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, because you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? And the angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be unable, unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. And then the angel left. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a, to a town in the country of Ju Judea, where she entered to Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. And when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leapt in her, leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. Okay, guys, go up to that next slide. There's some things that I want us to just, uh, just put in uh, a little order here that uh, Zachariah was prepared, Elizabeth was prepared, and Mary was prepared. Zechariah was a priest who knew the writings of the prophets. He was not a man... This was not a total surprise to him. Zechariah had been looking for a Messiah for many, many years, and he knew God would send one to him. He just didn't know where, and he didn't realize the part that he would play in that story. But when the angel came and told him the things that Zechariah had learned in studying God's word became alive to him. He was told by an angel, who was Gabriel, that he and his wife Elizabeth were to have a son and his name would be John. Now, when the baby was born, all of his relatives said, nobody in your family's named John? Our fifth grandbaby was named Davis. That's what Judy and I said. Nobody in our family is named Davis. Where did this come from? <laughs> And we still don't know, do we? That's the way they were as they, they heard John. Because of his unbelief, Zechariah could not speak until the baby was born. God had a plan for preparing the people. It wasn't just Zechariah. It wasn't just individuals, but it was also the people to whom the baby would be born. John, that one who would be sent, the son of Zechariah, would be filled with the Holy Spirit from birth. In fact, the scripture tells us that it was even before he was born that he was filled with the Holy Spirit, a very unusual thing. John would bring his people back to God, and John would go before the Lord to prepare the people of the Lord. Scripture tells us he was the voice of one crying in the wilderness. He was the one who would go and say, prepare the way for the Lord as the people would come. And as is recorded in the Gospel of John, he would say, behold, the Lamb of God has come to take away the sin of the world. John played a very important role. He opened the door for the Lord to come into the world in which the people live. Because he had gained respect and he had gained notoriety in what he did 
and calling people to repentance and baptizing them, they listened to what he said about Jesus when he came into the into their world. The Lord prepared Mary. Mary was told by Gabriel again that she would have a son and his name would be Jesus. Mary's unbelief was met with further explanation in the news that her relative Elizabeth was to have a baby also. And Mary went to stay with Elizabeth until John was born. I'm sure it was very good for these two ladies to be together, both of them having visits from angels, both of them carrying supernatural events inside of their bodies, both of them wondering exactly what was going on in their world, but mo both of them knowing that God was with them and that it was his spirit that had caused all of these things to come to pass. When I was born in 1944, my Aunt Ruby came and stayed with my mom before I was born. I know she must have been a lot of comfort to my mom, and uh, she, uh, she was there until I got home from the hospital with my mom, and she was always important to me for the rest of my life. She had been with me from the very beginning. And for Mary to come to Elizabeth, uh, Elizabeth is surely still trying to reckon with this. I'm an old woman, and I'm having a baby, and I'm taking, I'm bringing that baby home to an old man, and we're supposed to raise him, and somehow God is going to be working in all of this just as he is now. And when this young lady, her cousin Mary, came to her to tell her that she had had a similar experience, for them to be together and assure one another of what God was doing in their lives must have been a special thing in her life. In her life. God prepared Elizabeth. Elizabeth had been prepared for Mary's arrival, mainly by Zechariah coming home and saying, guess what? <laughs> guess what? The baby in Elizabeth's womb confirmed what she had been told. If you've ever felt the kick of a baby in a mother's womb, you know what a special thing that is. And for that baby to have leaped leapt within his mother's body to respond to Mary coming into the house. What a special thing that was because not only was it John leaping, but it gave Elizabeth an opportunity for joy to know that God was all, already at work within her body. Elizabeth confirmed to Mary what had been told. The mother of my Lord. A couple of years ago, two, one, zero, 19, 2019, I, uh, I preached a sermon on Mary. Now, that's a little unusual in a Baptist church. First one this preacher has ever done. I knew that was going to be the last Christmas I was going to be with White Rock Baptist Church, and so I felt safe with doing this. If they were going to run me off, okay. They, they were welcome to do it. But uh, I, uh, I had a, an old saint in that church who was a great source of strength to me and a great resource, great encourager uh, for what I did. We got a, got a letter from him just this week, and it just, it just blessed my heart so much. But he and I had talked about this sometime before. And after I preached the sermon, he said, Mike, I can't believe you did it. But the fact is, we Baptists have never given this young lady the proper place within the story that she deserves. God's favor did rest on her. God's spirit did work within her body. She did respond. And there's a great song that comes right after this passage that I'm not going to read to you. But Mary's song is a wonderful, that's a different sermon. Mary's sermon is a great thing to read to understand how she responded to God's word to her and God's spirit inside of her.
when it was time for Elizabeth to have her baby, she gave birth to a son. This is in verse 57 of, the, of chapter 1. Her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown her great mercy, and they shared her joy. On the eighth day, they came to circumcise the child, and they were, they were going to name him after his father, Zechariah, but his mother spoke and said, no, he is to be called John. And they said, okay, Elizabeth, you're not quite with it. You've just had a baby. There's no one among your relatives who has that name. So they went to Zechariah to find out what he would like to name the child. And he asked for a writing tablet. And to everyone's astonishment, he wrote, his name is John. His name is John. And immediately, Zechariah's mouth was opened and his tongue set free. And he began to speak, praising God, and all the neighbors were filled with awe. And throughout the hill country of Judea, people were talking about all of these things. Everyone who heard this wondered about it, asking, what then is this child going to be? For the Lord's hand was on him. And now here's Zechariah's song. His father, Zechariah, was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied. Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, because he has come to his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a horn of salvation, a sign of mighty strength for us in the house of his servant David, as he said through his holy prophets of long ago. Salvation from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his covenant the oath he swore to our father abraham to rescue us from the hand of our enemies and to enable us to serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all our days and you my child will be called a prophet of the most high for you will go on before the Lord to prepare the way for him, to give his people the knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins because of the tender mercy of our God by which the rising sun will come to us from heaven to shine on those living in darkness and the shadow of death, to guide our people in the path of peace. It's a wonderful song, and it's a wonderful panorama of what God had done to prepare Jesus coming into the world. It is a summary of Old Testament history. It is a summary of God's coming to his people and the things that he had done to prepare the way of the Lord. Sometime back, I, I outlined this. I've, I've got it here in my copy of the scripture. But verses 68 through, uh, through 69 lay out God's plan because he has come to his people and redeemed them and raised up a horn of salvation. He sent his prophets to tell of the one who was to come. As he said through his holy prophets of long ago, salvation from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, his promise to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. It's in verse 72 and 73, the oath he swore to our father Abraham to rescue us from the hands of our enemies. How far back did that go thousands of years? How far back was it that God had promised to be with his people? How long ago was it that Abraham had been called? But it was all a part of God's purpose that would come to fruition in the birth of this baby boy that Mary was carrying. He speaks of the preparation that would take place in John. You, my child, speaking to John, will be called a prophet. You will go before the Lord to prepare the way. And his purpose was to give his people the knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins. Because of the tender mercy of our God by which the rising sun will come to us from heaven, to shine on those living in darkness. Just a while ago, we read the people living in darkness have seen a great light. Isaiah wrote those words many years before, and now John would tell the people the light has come to the people living in darkness, to shine on those living in darkness in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the path of peace.
Early on, we read a passage out of Galatians chapter 4, verse 4. But at just the right time, and that's another sermon, but just at the right time, God sent his son. One of the reasons it was the right time is because God had been preparing for eons, for this moment in history, for this moment in our world. God doesn't do things at the last minute. He doesn't realize, whoops, I forgot something. Last year, Judy and I left CM and Faze because they had come down to Huntsville. We were here. This was on Christmas Day. We had left uh, to go to Eric's and Tyler. We had just gotten to Dallas, and she said, I forgot the chowder. Chowder is a sacred dish within our family, shrimp chowder. My mom made it for me when I was a kid. It's something I always get on my birthday. And we had had it with CM, and we were going to take it and have it with Eric. Guess what we did? We turned around and went back. 45 minutes back to Roanoke, and we got the chowder. We weren't going to leave home without it. Well, we weren't going to go to Eric's without it because he loves it as much as I do. And we headed back to Tyler. God doesn't make those mistakes. He doesn't leave things at home. He doesn't forget. He doesn't say, oh. When he tasted the recipe, he doesn't say, there's something missing here. Because it's all perfectly planned from the very beginning. God has always been at work in this world since he created it. He's always been at work in the lives of his people. He has always come to us revealing his will. And his will was that we all come back to him to know him in the fullness of who he is and have relationship with him as his children. Jesus was sent into our world to make that come about. At just the right time, he came. I hope you've made preparations for Christmas. And I hope the first one you made is that the child of Christmas is the Lord of your life. You cannot celebrate Christmas without knowing Jesus. You can party, but you can't celebrate Christmas without knowing Jesus. And if you don't know him, I invite you today to make him the Lord and master of your life. I hope you find some time in this Christmas to worship privately and with other Christians. I hope you get, I don't know if your house is a madhouse, uh, if, if you have a madhouse at Christmas or not. Most of us do. But I hope you find some time of quiet to reflect on what this is really all about. I hope you get to spend some time with other Christians singing Christmas songs. Uh, by the way, uh, First Baptist Church in Rhythm's having their uh, Christmas cantata tonight, Randy. Okay. Had it last night, and Randy went. He fully recommends it. But if you haven't, he, Ted, too. Okay. If you haven't done that, good opportunity to go and sing praises and hear praises and be a part of a special worship service. We all need to worship in a special way at Christmas time. In our hearts, with our brothers and sisters in Jesus. But I hope you haven't come to this Christmas time unprepared. And it's not about the food, and it's not about the travel, and it's not about the decorations. It's in your relationship with your Father in heaven with your brothers and sisters, and with your family. There's one other preparation that I hope you have made. Jesus came 2,000 years ago into this world, and one day he's coming back again. It's his word, not mine. It's his promise, not mine. He's coming back again. Hope you're ready for that second appearance, for that return of him to this world. He won't come back as a baby, the full-grown man in power and glory. But hopefully he's coming back for you. Will you pray with me? Our Father, we thank you this day. We thank you, Lord, for the Christ of Christmas. We thank you, Lord, for your grand preparation for the event that happened all those years ago. And, Lord, we thank you that today 
it is still happening in our lives and in our world around us. Lord, so many in this world don't understand because they don't know what Christmas really is all about. And I pray, Father, that all of us who know you as Lord and Savior, who have, a, who have had the baby Jesus born within our own lives, I pray, Lord, that we might live lives at this Christmas time that will reflect the light of Jesus coming into this world and that our lights will shine so that others may see it and glorify our Father in heaven. Lord, help us to be a part of your preparation of this Christmas season. Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Silent night. Okay, will you stand? We're going to sing Silent Night as a hymn of decision. I invite you today, if you don't know Jesus as your Savior, I'd love to talk to you. You don't have to come now. Just catch me and tell me. Let's sing together. and keep you through this Christmas time. May he keep you safe. May he keep you sacred. May he hold you in the palm of his hands every single minute of this celebration. And may he cause the light of Christmas to shine in your life. And may others see Jesus in you. Let's grab hands and Let's take hands. Let's all grab. If you're our Let's guest take today, hands. Just grab a hand across the aisle God. there, and, and we're going to sing it. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain, cleansed by his blood. Join heirs with Jesus as we travel this song. For a part of the family, the family of God. Thank you. Blessings. Merry Christmas.